We're talking about possibilities this month. Possibilities are a good thing, right? I mean, having possibilities, who doesn't want that? The interesting thing to me is that there is certainly having possibilities is a good thing, but I notice having a couple of possibilities is freeing, whereas for me, having too many possibilities is actually very debilitating. I know this is a position of privilege to talk about too many possibilities, but here's what I'm trying to say. I was reading this article about car sales, and they were saying that when you buy a new car, this is a deliberate strategy. It's not just that it happens, it's a deliberate strategy. You're asked all these minute, particular questions that are very time consuming about you know, what color upholstery and the wheel size and do you want AM or FM and all of these little, little things that go on and on until you're so tired, all you want is to go home. And then at that point they say, do you want this very expensive um, insurance policy? Basically, uh, you know, it'll extended warranty program. Now, according to Consumer Report, who I trust, those actually aren't worth that much. But you're so tired at that point from listening to all these tiny decisions and these possibilities of, do you want a sunroof? What, you know, do you want an included um, garage door opener? All of these little things you could do that you just go, well, what is, what is that warranty? And then they say, well, you know, if you break down and you say, sure, I'll spend $3,000 on it or whatever it is, a, a lot of money. And I was really startled to read that this was a deliberate strategy because I always just thought I, I tired and there was something wrong with me and that, um, you know, I just needed to cover that up and get out of there. But to read that actually they're using the option of possibilities to wear you out until you make a large decision without much consciousness or capacity, that kind of startled me. And I sometimes feel like life is like that. You know, I get used up on the small decisions. Like I was at Target recently and I was looking for a bath mat, which seemed like a simple enough thing to do. I'm having company, the dog kind of wrecked the old one. There were like a hundred bath mats for me to choose from. And once I started to look at them all, it was really hard to decide. And I was standing there for a long time. And then I noticed that there was this young couple, just married, it turned out we got to know each other from spending all this time in this aisle because there were bath mats and towels in the aisle and they were trying to pick out towels. And they turned to me kind of as an older figure and said, how, how do you make a decision on towels? And I said, I don't know, how do you make a decision on bath mats? And we, we all laughed. But those tiny decisions can use us up so that when we get home and it's actually time to really think about something important, we're worn out, we're just too tired to do it. So I just wanna finish by talking for a minute about what we do when we feel like there are no possibilities. I've talked about the immobilization of too many possibilities, but also I think sometimes we just feel stuck as if there's no possibility for movement at all. So I've got, it won't surprise you, three little tips about what you could do if you can't find any possibility for yourself in this moment. The first thing I would suggest is that you look for a mirror. You look for somebody who embodies possibility to you and you look at how they can mirror back to you your own ability to act. You know, part of our mission statement is that we are a community that generates the courage to act. And part of finding that courage, I think, is to find mirrors, find people who've already acted in some kind of way that we're scared to do. The second thing I do often when I just feel stuck, whatever it is I'm stuck about, is just switch my frame and just do something kind for someone. It might be that I go feed the birds. It might be that I pet my dog, which is kind for my dog and for me. It might be that I call a lonely relative or that I do something that's simply for somebody else. I find that switching my mind in that way reinforces to me that I have possibility, I have agency, I can act. And the third thing I would remind us all of, because we all forget way too much, is breath. At any moment when something feels impossible, 
a deep breath can only help. Breath is there for every single one of us. We share that with each other. So I invite you now to take a deep breath as we explore this April theme of possibilities. <laughs>